So we're continuing our Kings and Queens series of English monarchs. We did Henry III earlier this summer. We're now looking at Edward I. Um, Longshanks, obviously, is his nickname. He rules from 1272 to 1307, although he's not crowned until 1274 because he's off on crusade. He's born in 1239. He is known as the Lord Edward because the term Prince of Wales is not a term yet. We'll get to that in later videos. He dies in 1307 on campaign fighting against the Scots following the Battle of Loudon Hill, which is won by Robert the Bruce. We'll get to that as well. Early on in his life, Henry III is obviously his father's still king. The Second Baron's War erupts. He's a very active participant on the royalist side. After, for a brief period, being on the Baron's side during the build-up to conflict, he, he fights alongside his father at the Battle of Lewis in 1264 and the Battle of Evesham in 1265. He's very, very important um, in the conflict. He will also lead uh, campaigns to defeat uh, de Montfort's forces as well. That's the Second Baron's War. So he's, he's fighting... Um, uh, he's, he's a military king, basically. He joins the Ninth Crusade in 1271, following the conclusion of the Second Baron's War. He's on crusade at the time his father dies in 1272. He then is on his way back to England in time for his coronation in 1274. Early on in his reign, he starts to reform Parliament, taxation and common law to avoid basically a Third Baron's War, basically. However, by 1276, there's a rebellion in the Welsh lands controlled by the English crown, which is suppressed by 1277. A second rebellion starts in 1282, which leads to the full conquest of Wales by 1283. So Wales and the principalities of Wales are no longer independent countries. They come under the English crown and they've been under the English crown ever since. Hence the term Prince of Wales, which Charles III, our current king, was Prince of Wales for the longest period of time. He's now assumed... Uh, the role of king following the death of Queen Elizabeth, and we'll do videos on the royal family leading up all the way to Elizabeth and uh, the second and, and Charles the third, and we'll have a look at his his early reign. Now, so those rebellions are suppressed, and there is peace for a lengthy period of time. Before conflict with Scotland begins, the Edict of Expulsion is signed. This is to raise revenue for his castle building projects in Wales and. Pay, pay his soldiers. Now, the Edict of Expulsion is not overturned in fully until 1657 by Oliver Cromwell. Basically, the Edict of Expulsion expels all Jews from England. So at this point in Europe, anti-Semitism is rife and a lot of um, kings and queens, dukes, duchesses, earls, whatever, you know, country you live in, uh, they're enacting similar laws across Europe, uh, and which leads to a lot of a lot of Jews living in Eastern Europe. This is part of it. There's the Edict of Expulsion. They are they're thrown out of England in 1290. Then in 1294, uh, a little known conflict between England and France called the Anglo-French War uh, erupts. It's in two phases: 1294 to 1298, and 1300 to 1303. This goes alongside the war with Scotland between 1296 and 1328. Although King Edward will die in 1307, following the Battle of Loudon Hill of just ill health and old age, whilst on campaign to try and reverse. The, the effects of that battle, which is a victory for Robert the Bruce. Now, several key battles in the First Scottish War of Independence and the Anglo-French Anglo-French Wars, or the Anglo-French War of 1294 to 1303 in the two phases. They lose the Battle of Stirling Bridge in 1297, but they win the Battle of Falkirk in 1298. That's the setting of the film Braveheart surrounding William Wallace. The Battle of Courtrai is won in 1302 by Flemish allies of the English crown against the French, also known as the Battle of Golden Spurs. Basically, it's continuous warfare from, from 1294 throughout the rest of his reign. Now, the Anglo-French War is concerning for the English crown because Gascony, which becomes a, a, a sowing of the seed of the Hundred Years' War, is where a lot of soldiers and taxes and, 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 and supporters of the crown come from. Gascony is English lands and it's very, very important to the English crown for taxation and manpower for their armies. So... With the wars in, in with the Anglo-French War in the two phases, that is quite important. Also, Flanders is quite important as it the, uh, the, the Duchy of Flanders uh, is also very important as it's also an ally of the English crown. The French want Gascony. The French want Flanders. Calais, modern Calais, is in Flanders. Gascony is where Bordeaux is. So modern France eventually gains these lands later on in warfare, but these lands are very important. And it's just constant warfare which has a massive drain on, on the Treasury, which is why Edward II has a lot of problems in his reign and, and, well, 
meets a very bloody end. But he's married twice. He's married first to Eleanor of Castile uh, between 1254 and 1290, and then Margaret of France from 1299 till his death in 1307. He has quite a few kids. Now, Henry, one of his sons, dies very young. He only lives between 1268 and 1274. But some of his other kids are quite important. Uh, you've got Eleanor, Countess of Bar, Joan, Countess of Hereford, Margaret, Duchess of the Brabant, that's in Europe, Mary of Woodstock. Woodstock is a village near Blenheim Palace in Oxfordshire. Woodstock is a very important place for um, uh, the English royal family and then eventually the British royal family historically. Uh, there's another daughter who becomes Countess of Hereford, Elizabeth. And of course, Edward II who will become King of England and not do a very good job, uh, Thomas, Earl of Norfolk, and Edmund, Earl of Kent. So he has a lot of kids. Edward II is obviously the most important. Well, he becomes king following Edward I's uh, death in 1307. Cannot win the war against Scotland. Robert the Bruce will ultimately become king, and which will ultimately lead to the, the, the House of Stuart becoming kings further down the line, which leads to constant conflict between England and France in the coming centuries. And ultimately leads to James I, King of England, James VI of Scotland. So because of the ongoing conflict when Edward I dies, it leads to chaos in the realm following weak government deaths. So there we go. Basically, the, the kingdom is in constant warfare throughout his reign. So there you go. Thank you very much for watching. Please place your thoughts in the comments section below. And I'll have some more videos for you very, very soon.